Okay, so in this section we'll be going over Studio 5000. Well, to go ahead and do this, we'll go ahead and open it and I'll show you what, what prompts up. Studio 5000 pops up the uh, initial window right here. Is you have a create, you have an open, and you have explore. And each section is pretty much, you know, it's kind of obvious on what it does. So uh, in the create, you have a new project, you have an import project, you have a sample, you, you know, you can choose from samples existing uh, it's kind of similar to what you used to have right and if you've dealt with 5000 before or studio 5000 you know what, exactly what what to do but what I would like to do for those who haven't is I'd like to show you that um, then we're gonna make a new project right so we're gonna do all our stuff based upon using a uh, emulation software so the RS logics uh, emulate uh, so what we'll do is we'll make a, a a brand new project and we'll start it from scratch so when we hit new excuse me well when we hit new it generally I think by default it pops up factory top view so I want to make sure that you know that don't go ahead you, you need to it's it's very important that you pay attention to the left hand side where you're at whether you're on logics or you're on factory top view because you could be you know starting a pan of view module um, you know whether it be a pan of view 6 uh, pan of view 7 or you you know you have your different sections so the good thing about this is all your uh, your pan of view stuff is stuck in one section and you know so all your uh, HMI graphics and stuff of that nature so you can choose distributed uh, for SE you can choose uh, local station network station in our case we're going to be back on logics this shows you a breakdown of all the processors that are available um, and then down here, of course, this would start our our L7 processors that we currently have um, that are, are pretty popular, and the new L8s. So the new L8s that are, you know, the the basically the scans change with that because the processor scans different. So those are very different too as well. So what we'll be doing is the uh, emulate 5000. So all you do is basically so whatever you're using you just kind of highlight it and you you would type in you know make your file from that point so what we'll do is we'll, we'll put in uh, studio training and then we'll put the date so this is the uh, the 2017 event so we're going to name it 2017 um, then we'll hit, well, at this point we'll click next so this is the part where I was talking about that uh, studio is from version 21 all the way to version 30 so you can pick whatever version you want to now in our case we're going to pick 28 and that's the reason because this is the they don't have a emulation software for version 30 yet and we don't want to keep backing up you know we want to get the latest and greatest so in this case we'll be using 28 uh, we can use 30 not a big deal the differences in 30 and 28 are very minimal so I will say that you're not you know it's not like we're losing losing ground anywhere so you have your protection modules you can protect it with security uh, you can change your chassis like you always normally have uh, you can change your slot numbers uh, you know as, as far as whatever slots you wanted to put it in put your uh, your processor in so just make sure you note that all these attributes are basically the same as what they have been. Um, then you have, like if you come down here to, the, you know, enable the factory talk security, you can set your permissive, uh, like a different, like if you want a permissive set or something of that nature, you come in here and, and change a whole bunch of stuff, right? So you can add uh, security to this and, and explain what you're doing. Uh, in our case, we're not going to be choosing to do that. You know, we want to leave it open. That's more of a like an OEM type situation. You know, if you wanted to protect what you're doing um, and not have it, so it, you know, it's, it's it's there's different elements to that, right? Security has been a big thing with Rockwell over the years, uh, trying to get everything so uh, so you don't have any kind of you know hacking or anything of that nature. You know, the first, last thing you want to do is spend all this time programming something and somebody has the easy ability to get in there and, and do something. Um, although that's kind of unlikely, but 
it can it can happen. So again, I just kind of want to go over a few features. Uh, you know how we you know came about uh, the splash screen. You know the uh, project, the new, making a new project. You can import. You can do samples. Um, you know we may show some sample stuff. We may do this. You know different stuff. But what I wanted to, to kind of highlight is a brand new project. So this is what we're doing. And in this training, we're going to be doing 28. And these are our attributes for our system. So again, it's a 10 slot chassis. Slot zero is what we're going to be picking. Uh, nothing out of, you know, standard out of the box stuff. So we'll click finish and we'll go ahead and make, make our project. So at this point, uh, again, this is kind of like the software just starting up and, and making uh, like we've always seen in the, the classic 5000. Um, so in this case, it's, it's Studio 5000, Logics Designer. And it's going ahead and, and making the file that we just created, right? So as you see, it's uh, it's pretty quick. And we'll go ahead and uh, the loading screen, loading the uh, start page. So now what we do right here is you can see we'll go to our attributes and we'll see that we are uh, the attributes that we put in, right? We are an emulate uh, controller and we can change that at any given time, right? You know, just like you always could. So you can still change it after you've created it. Um, you can change the name after you created it. Uh, you can change anything you want. Um, so at this point, you know, basically this being a, uh, we may come in and, and as soon as we do servos and stuff, we'll talk about the, uh, you know, time synchronization. And at this point, we do have our task, our main task put in, our main program put in, and our main routine. We have uh, the back plane has the chassis that we just put, or the, the controller that we just put in. So that's in slot zero again. And if you, you know, as a side note, you have this second, and, and I'm not sure if you're familiar with, so I'm going to go over, over uh, Studio 5000. Is you, you know me, this is your controller um, organizer, which is what we've been seeing for years. The new stuff, uh, the new uh, Studio 5000, whether you're familiar with it or not, you do have the logic organizer, which is basically just your logic. Right, so you can kind of just have either one. So if you don't, if you're ever dealing with the software and you kind of see that, you know, just to click away, right? So um, this being the start of what we're doing, the first thing I like to do, um, being that this is a, uh, this main task is a continuous task, is I think it's be in best practice for uh, proper timing is to go ahead and get uh, everything in a periodic. So what we'll do is we'll put the periodic at 50 milliseconds and we'll keep the priority, say for instance, like a six. Um, yeah, that's fine. And we'll hit apply. So at that point is that we now change our, our main controller to a periodic task. So at this point, um, you know, I, I just go ahead and, and tell you that the way this thing scans, instead of it scanning and using a scan of I guess how the the way a continuous so let's break that down a little bit closer for those who don't know. So let's talk about this. So the difference between a periodic and a continuous and event driven, right? The continuous task will continuously scan, and basically, if you're the bigger your program gets, and the more things it has to, to interpret, is depends on how fast and and the timing of of things that you you would possibly lose control of so with using a continuous task at a certain point it doesn't matter um, really I guess the, the structure as much as it does um, because you, you don't really have control um, once the the timing scheme gets too big so what I mean by that is like if I had a periodic task it scans based upon what I, you know, what we program it as. So if we have a periodic task to, to 50 milliseconds, every 50 milliseconds that data 
in that task will be updated. Thereof are, are quicker, but based upon the scan rate. And we'll, we'll talk about that as we go. So if I tell it to scan every 50 milliseconds, it may only take it 2 milliseconds to scan the logic, but it will not scan it again till 50 milliseconds. So I can have several different things over here in my I.O. tree, or basically in my, like, several different tasks, and put the most, basically the, the most important stuff at a lower rate if I want a high-speed system, or some of the most, uh, stuff I don't, I'm not really sure, or, or kind of just not really worried about at a higher uh, scan rate. So I'd like to, you know, just point that out, is that's the differences, and the event-driven um, that's basically, you know, so you would basically drive that off of, of another logic and not use the logic or not use that, that task until you actually tell it to based upon, you know, logic. And we'll get right down that, you know, in, a, in further training uh, videos. But in this video right here, uh, I just want to kind of break down the continuous, the periodic, and the uh, event. So again, we've chosen the periodic. Um, and the reason again behind that is because I want to control once we get so big I want to be able to control different sections of it and in that at instance what I like to do is I like to put behind this is I like to put you know, 50 milliseconds so I know exactly what it is so I can come back and tell you if I have you know several different tasks I can just tell you from the outside I don't have to open up the um, basically the properties and see what this is set at so, again, this is the, the initial setup of our Studio 5000 at version 28. And uh, I want to conclude with that. And we'll go ahead and pick up in the next video um, and start building our program out. So, again, thank you for watching this, this first section. And we'll pick up on the next section as we go. So, all right, we'll see you in the next one.